Hey folks, it's Nick Granville. I just thought I'd do a quick lesson on phrasing and some ideas that you can try to work on your phrasing in terms of how you improvise. So um, I'm just going to play some stuff and then I'll talk about what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so that was just a little bit of improvising in F minor, so I'm just kind of playing around with some stuff. And you'll notice there's a certain arc to things, like I'm playing a phrase and then it has a breath, and I play a phrase and have a breath. And so what I'm imagining in my mind is kind of how a singer would sing something, right? They would, a singer would never just connect all the words together and all the notes, so they'd run out of breath and they'd kind of be gasping for air. So I, I try to think like that, like where would the gaps be where someone would need a breath? <laughs> Right, and then a breath. And a breath. Right, and I kind of let the let the breaths happen naturally where they would. And I don't try and fight that, because sometimes you think, well, you know, maybe I'll play across things and stuff like that, but kind of let the, the natural tendencies of where the breath would be guide you. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do too is try and imagine you, that you're playing with another player, that you're you're playing duo, say for example, or, or say in a quartet with two guitars. Right, and you would play something, but then the other person would play something in response, and then you would play something like a call and response idea, right? But we're just imagining that in our heads, and the idea of this is that we're leaving a big gap for that to help our phrasing. The other person would play here. And then I would let them play. play well, that's what I meant to do um, anyway you get the idea of that and the idea of that is that I'm thinking about how somebody else might respond to my playing and then what I'm doing is essentially is I'm leaving a bigger hole um, for their their uh, musical input into what I would be playing um, and, and the uh, the great thing about that is it means that I'm going to leave big spaces because guitar is one of those instruments that we don't have to breathe on it's not like a like a vocal or a saxophone player or something like that so we can you know <laughs> I mean, a singer would be dead trying to do that, right? They would have ran out of breath and they'd probably be like on the floor, you know, because they've got to breathe, you know, and whereas we don't have that same kind of restriction on guitar, which can be an advantage and a disadvantage, you know. In a certain setting, like a Stevie Ray Vaughan trio type setting, that, you know, you can play more because it's drums, bass, and guitar, but in most settings, you want to leave a bit of space. And I find just by imagining another player responding with me, that's a really good way to do it because I'm essentially just leaving a big gap every, every phrase. Right? Those are a couple of things that you can try with your phrasing. Another thing you can try with your phrasing too is just making sure that all your ideas end nicely. Now what I mean by that is like where you start is usually the thing we think about the most, right? Because we're thinking about you got, you got to start, right? So we think about what, what's our starting note and then everything else kind of tails off from there often. You know, not always, but, but a lot of people, that's the way they play. And I find it's more useful to kind of think of the ends of phrases because that's the thing that kind of tidies it up and makes it kind of work. You know what I mean? I can play almost any note I want as long as I resolve correctly, right? So therefore, it's the resolution that's important, not the starting point. Do you follow? Hope so. If not, leave, leave a question in the comments below and I'll, um, I'll try and answer it. But for example, I can go... <laughs> Now 
was just a load of rubbish and it was a whole lot of chromatic nothing but the idea was that that kind of still worked because I came out on an F note here and then down here right and by those two I'm making my whole phrase make sense and, and by that I, I think that helps your phrasing a lot is to try and think about the ends of all your, your notes <laughs> So there I thought about I was going to end on an F, now I'm going to end on a C. Now an A flat. Right, so anyway, thinking about the ends of your phrases is kind of the, the goal with that. Uh, by the way, I'll, I'll talk about this guitar a little later, but I've done some new things with it, and you'll probably notice I'm kind of missing bends a little more. Um, I've gone up a gauge of strings, and I'll, I'll discuss why later. Um, anyway, so out of that, we're thinking about the ends of the phrases. Another thing you can think about, too, is kind of think about how the structure of a lot of songs work. Like if you think of something like Hey Joe by Jimi Hendrix, um, I mean, it's, or, or a lot of blues tunes, like a 12 bar blues, right? The real common thing that would happen in the lyrics would be a phrase, and then that phrase stated again, and then thirdly, a kind of a, a tying off to those first two parts. So it's like in three parts, the so 12 bars essentially becomes four, four, and four in, in, in three different parts, right? And we can think like that too when we improvise, right? And that'll help our phrasing immensely. So for example, I'm going to play something and then I'm going to play it again and then I'm going to play sort of an answer to it or a recap if you like. Right, so I played my first idea, I played my first idea with one extra note on the end and then a recap. I'll do that again. Or I could go. And that's just the same idea, but down an octave, but it sounds different, but really essentially it's just a, the same thing, right? And that's something that gives your, your improvising a, a compositional nature to it. And I think that's kind of one of the key things to phrasing is that you think about the compositional nature of your of your improvising, right? And because and great improvising really should kind of come across as being composed, even though it's not. I mean, listen to Sonny Rollins. I mean, he, he did this all the time. It kind of it sounded in some senses it sounded like some of his ideas were extremely worked out, but I'm I'm sure they were just flows of um, ideas. But I'm sure he had thought about this when he practiced, you know. Um, anyway, I'll give you another example of that. <laughs> So there I played an idea and then I played the idea up as if it was like um, an extension of the first idea and then I played that idea that trailed off to finish, right? Um, anyway, it's just some things to think about with phrasing. So I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, leave them below. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll talk about this guitar now. So I've just had my tech, Rob Matthews, do some work on this. Um, I got the original pickups put back in. These are the original Talman pickups. I had a Damasio area in here and I had a Seymour Duncan Lil 59. And I'm finding that I'm playing the Schofield guitar a lot more at the moment. And I thought, well, seeing as I've got a humbucker in that guitar, and a much better humbucker, but my favourite humbucker bridge pickup of any guitar, it just suits it, that guitar so well. I kind of wanted a, that single coil tally sound, so I went back to that. And this just does that so well. <laughs> Tally thing, but what I really missed more of all, most of all, because this guitar is wired kind of unusually. I have neck pickup in the, that setting, and I have neck in middle, right? And then normally that would be middle, but I've actually got it to the tally position, where it's the two outside positions. And I found that the tally single coil and the humbucker, while it worked okay, it works so much better now. There's a single coil here, and that's one of the ones I'd miss because I use that sound a lot. <laughs> The 
thing I got him to do too is so I got the pickup swapped back and I also went up to 11s. I had 10s on this guitar for so long, 10 to 49 elixirs. I've gone up to 11, sorry, 10 to 46. These are 10, these are now 11 to 49 elixir nano webs, um, which I've been using elixir for years in my favorite strings because who's got time to change strings, right? I want them to last as long as possible when <laughs> these do. Um, you know, I'd rather just play the guitar than spend my time changing strings. Anyway, these are 11s, and the idea I wanted to go with 11s was just to get a little more tension, and what I had been doing with my Sko guitar, I had 11s on that, and then I'd have 10s on any of the guitars that were at the Fender scale. But I found that this guitar, I think it suits 11s better. I've gone up to 11s, it just sounds a little thicker and fuller, and what I like about it is I'm getting a little more resistance. I mean, there is, it's a bit of a myth that, that heavier strings sound better. They sound different. You know, and the difference is so small, you know. Um, I've heard some players go from 9s to 11s and you can hear that they're struggling to bend, but the tone is so similar. Um, and also too, you know, if you look at any of the great players, I mean, there's been loads of great players who played light strings and just had the hugest guitar tones. I mean, Brian May comes to mind, B.B. King, Jimmy Page. These guys had massive guitar sounds and yet they had thinner strings. Um, you know, and so sometimes thinner strings can sound better. It's all about getting what's right for the instrument. And I think this instrument really suits 11s. So that's kind of why I went there. Um, various other guitars I have suit 10s. I've got like my AZ has 10s on it. I have 11s on the SCO because that's had 11s for since forever and that just works on that guitar. Um, anyway, any questions? Leave them below. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've got those two outside pickups happening in that one now and it just, that's the tally sound. Um, and of course that, those two work really well. That, that thing and I love that these sort of guitars are just such great rhythm guitars at least in my opinion that's kind of what I want to use it for most anyway this has been quite a long lesson I only plan to do a quick one so I hope everybody's well stay safe and um, remember to subscribe and um, you know if you've got any questions leave the, them below um, I'll be posting some new videos soon I'm trying to do about once a week of these kind of quicker ones like this unedited just one take all the way through so stay stay safe um, keep perfect time to be practicing guitar anyway cheers people